Good morning, everyone. Great to see you guys. Thank you so much for being here again. This is, I believe, day seven of the 12 days of command. And today we'll be talking all about goals. So if you are here and you have not entered your goals into command, you're going to leave today with the understanding of how to do it, how to track it, how to measure it, and really set yourself up for success prior to 2022. Um, so my name is Sydney Seymour. If you haven't been on one of these yet, I'm the regional technology trainer for the Carolinas region and excited to spend the next 30 minutes with all of you um, talking about goals. But since this is the 12 days of command, we'll start it a little bit with a holiday question. So if you want to just drop your answer in chat, um, during the holidays, are you traveling anywhere? And if you are, where are you going? So um, just drop in chat so we can all get to know each other a little bit better in this Zoom virtual world. Are you traveling during the holiday season? Um, and if you are, where are you going? So while that is coming up, I'm just going to pull a couple things over on my screen to drop in chat, and then we'll take a look at that together. Um, oh, Charleston, I would stay there too. Chicago, it's freezing there. I hope you take a jacket. The beach, that's nice. Oh, Williamsburg, that's beautiful. Well, those of you that are traveling. I hope you guys have um, safe travels, have a wonderful time. I'll be celebrating Christmas at home with my family and then traveling to Washington, D.C. in between Christmas and New Year's and excited for that. Um, so again, thank you guys for being here. We're going to talk all about goals today. So I'm going to drop a couple things in chat. Um, first link that I'm going to drop in chat is going to be the question that we get a lot, which is where can I access these recordings after? Um, so that's going to take you to our regional YouTube channel. That is where all of the recordings of the 12 days of command and a lot of other recordings from the region will live. So if you have to jump off of this or weren't able to make all of the 12 days, you can access those there. The second link is going to be the link to our regional Facebook page. And that's going to have a list of all of the 12 days of command. So we've got, what is that? five more days maybe after this. So the rest of those. Um, and then the last two are what we'll be talking about today, how to set or edit your goals in command for 2022, and then how to track your progress once you've set that and you actually have production coming in around that. So just some nice um, articles from answers.kw.com around everything that we're going to talk about today. So if you want to go back at a later time and take a look at that. So again, I've dropped that in chat for you guys. I know people are, are still jumping on. So if anybody jumps on later, I'll drop those links in there again so that anybody that wasn't here is still able to access those. And then um, just one more thing, you guys, tomorrow will be the next of the 12 days of command. And that will be all about opportunity checklist. Uh, that workshop will be tomorrow at 2 p.m. So tomorrow, Thursday at 2 p.m. will be all about opportunity checklist. And we'll actually go into a really great bonus feature, which is how you can get automatic updates sent to your clients through the opportunity checklist. So some really, really great stuff there. All right, so we're gonna rock and roll. Um, as a reminder, anytime that you guys have questions or if we wanna discuss anything, your comfort level is fine with me. So if you wanna unmute, please feel free to do that. Ask any questions, have a discussion around anything or I'm gonna pull up chat on my second screen over to the right and I'll be monitoring that as well. So if at any time you have any questions or we wanna discuss anything, please um, make your voice be heard there as well. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started and I'm gonna share my screen. I've got command pulled up already. I went ahead and logged into that as you guys were jumping on the Zoom. Um, all right, so let me just do my setups here with my chat and we are ready to go. Awesome. All right, so we've logged into command. So as a reminder, we're gonna get into command by going to agent.kw.com. You've got your username and your password. That's gonna give you access into command. Um, that's gonna take you to your front page, which is going to take you to your dashboard that might look a little bit different than mine. What we're gonna talk about today are all about goals. So we're gonna talk about how to enter your 2022 goals. It's about seven to eight questions that you're gonna to need to know the answers to. And then based off of that, it's actually gonna track what do you need to do? How many leads do you need? There's got really, really cool data behind the scenes of that. 
So for us to get into goals, and while I'm doing that, just so I have kind of a clear understanding of who we have on the call and where we are as far as a comfort level about this, um, if you guys can just do me a favor and drop in chat, it's just a yes or no answer. Have you entered your goals for 2022 yet in command? So just a yes or a no, this is a safe space. If the answer is no, you're here for a reason. Um, so just so I have an understanding. Okay, oh my gosh, you guys came to the correct class. So I'm happy that you're here because that's what we're gonna talk about today. So good job on you guys for being here. Um, so remember, anytime if we're not super familiar with command yet, or we don't really have an understanding of what the applets do yet, we can always click on that red button at the top left. That's going to open up that window, and that's going to allow us to see all of the different applets that we have in command. So what we're going to talk about today is goals. Now, the goals entry actually lives under reports. So once we've clicked on that red button, reports is what looks like the little bar graph next to it. And then right next to it, it just says reports. So we're gonna click on that. Now this is where you're gonna have access or data into your database health score. It's where you're gonna be able to see if you're on a team, any lead routing, it's where email metrics will show up, all kinds of data like that. What we're going to dive in today is the tab kind of in the middle of the page at the very top that says goals. So that's where we're going to go to be able to input our goals. So all we're gonna do is click on goals right there. And then you'll see if you've never entered your goals for 2021, completely fine. We might have some blank data here or some numbers that just look a little bit funky, but that's fine because we're actually gonna move into 2022 and go ahead and set those goals up. So once we've clicked into goals, which remember if we backtrack just a little bit, all we've done so far is we've logged into command we clicked on reports, which looks like the bar graph. Then we click directly on goals. Now you'll only have to do the goal setup once, and then it will start to track everything for you. So we'll go through how to set up the goals. So once we've clicked on goals, you'll notice that over here on the top right, we've got a little blue button that says goal settings. We're gonna click on that. And then it's just a nice little introduction general details of what we expect out of this guide. So we're gonna scroll can you, down. Can you click on that blue button again? I missed it, I had my screen blown in. Yeah, absolutely. So if we go back to, if we're in reports and then we've clicked on goals, we're just gonna click right here at the top right where it says goal settings. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And then we're gonna scroll down to the bottom of the page. There's nothing you can really do on this page. It's just a general explanation of what you're going to expect in the next few pages. And all we're gonna do is click on get started. And that's it. Then it's gonna walk us through, if you don't have any data here or anything written, that's fine. We're gonna go in and enter that now. All we're gonna focus on is what's over here on the right hand side of the page. This is all we're gonna go through together. So you'll see the first section is what year are you setting your goals for? We are setting them for next year, which is 2022. So again, not setting them for this year, we're almost done with that. We're gonna say that we're setting them for next year, 2022. Now, the next question, this is going to be different for everyone. What is your 2022 annual profit goal? And then you'll notice there's a little thing that we can hover over with all of these questions. So if we need kind of additional information, if we have questions about this, it gives us a nice tool tip there. So it's telling us here, this is the amount of profit that your business earns before taxes and after subtracting the cost of sales and operating expenses from your GCI. So before taking tax out pre-tax, how much money do you want to earn? Now, for some of you, it might already be entered as a million dollars because we all want to be an MREA. However, if we need to change that and we want to come in and say, I actually want to make 100,000, we can change that right there. So again, pre-tax, how much money do we want to be making there? Then we're going to come down here to your annual operating expenses. And you'll notice we've got two options here. We can choose your percentage of GCI or a fixed amount. Now this is for your expenses. 
as well as your cost of sales. So this is nice. They've changed this up this year. It used to just be a fixed amount and a lot of agents did not know like the true fixed amount, but we know, okay, on average, 25% of my gross commission income goes to expenses and 15% goes to my cost of sales. Now you can change these numbers later. So if you wanna put in what you believe might be actual, and then as you're looking at the end of the year, maybe your statements, or you're looking at your cost of sales and expenses, we can come in and change that. If we wanted to keep this as a percentage, we would keep this one. And then down here, it's gonna tell you what we mean by expenses. Expenses are expenses that are made whether or not a transaction takes place. So for example, if you had a year where you did not sell any homes, what expenses do you still have to pay? So think your MLS dues, if you're on a team and you have salaries for ISAs, lead generation things that you're paying for, whether you have a sale or not, marketing expenses around your brand, postcards that you're sending out, whether you have a sale or not. All of these different things are what go into expenses. So we could say, okay, our expenses will keep at 30%. That's fine. Cost of sale is different. Cost of sale are expenses that are made only when a transaction takes place. So for example, a split to your agents, if you're on a team, transaction coordinators, ISAs, referral fees, anything that is transaction dependent. I know every transaction that I have, I pay X amount of dollars to my transaction coordinator, or I make sure I do all of these marketing things. I send out postcards once I have a sale. How much is that? So these, these cost of sale items don't happen unless we have a sale and then we're making that payment. So I'm gonna keep both of these at 30%. If you know your numbers and you prefer to make it a fixed amount and you're saying this is the exact dollar, we can come up here and say fixed amount and put in that price there or that cost. I'm gonna keep it as percentage and I'm actually just gonna bump both of these to 25% just so we can see how that change happens. Now underneath here is your business makeup. So do you work mostly with listings or do you work mostly with buyers? And what is that percentage to get to 100? And then do you work with any leases? We could add that in there as well. So maybe I say like this year, I was actually a bit more buyer heavy. And so I might say I was actually 60% buyers and probably 40% listings. These have to equal to 100. So we can't go higher or less than that. So we could change that if we're finding like that's truly not 50-50. Then underneath, what is your average commission per unit? And so if I find, okay, well, the buyers that I worked with were a little bit lower. So I found that I was actually probably making like 6,500 on that versus listings. Um, I actually took some higher price listings and I was making 7,500 around that. So we can come in and change that based off of that as well. So again, here on this screen, we're only talking about what year are we setting the goals for? What's our profit goal? What's our annual operating expenses, whether we want to do percentage or the fixed amount? And then what's your business makeup? Listings versus buyers as a percentage, and then your average commission per unit, which can be different for listings as well as buyers, if we're experiencing that. Again, if you don't know all of these numbers right now, we can absolutely just put in placeholders and then you can come back after you look at maybe what you've done this year. And we wanna have really true numbers around that. Once we've come in and entered all of that information, we're just gonna hit next. And then it's gonna take us to where we can set our conversion rate. So this is the one thing where we just wanna have a little bit of thought around this. So if we look at this funnel over here, um, this is what, we have set up as conversion rates. So we're saying that any lead that comes into you, there's a 5% chance that you are converting that to a closing. And a lead is people who have shown interest in the services you offer, have not engaged in a two-way conversation. Contacts are leads that you have held in a two-way conversation and have established a value-based relationship with 
appointments set, scheduled meetings with prospective clients, appointments kept, scheduled meetings with prospective clients that actually take place, agreements, meaning a buyer broker agreement or a listing agreement, under contract or pending, meaning a buyer is under contract on the sale of a home or a listing that you have represented is under contract, and then closed units. And you'll notice we have these conversion rates of at this point, that's the percentage, the likelihood that it's going to get to the closing table. So over here on the right, we can set your conversion rates. And it's going to tell you the default conversion rates below are very conservative benchmarks. As the Keller Cloud gains more data, the default numbers will be updated. So as you take a lead and move it to a contact, and then that becomes an appointment, your leads to contacts conversion ratio will change. So I will tell you that if you keep your leads at this 5%, it's going to tell you that you need a lot of leads. So this is where if you run your business and you say, I don't do a lot with internet leads or kind of random leads. To me, a lead is someone that I've had a conversation with and we're potentially putting them into as a contact. We might wanna bump this conversion rate up a little bit. So we might wanna say for my conversion rate, I actually wanna make this like 25 rather than five. The 5% conversion rate is for those internet leads where we're fishing with a huge pond and we're getting maybe like 500 leads, but it's taking a really long time to convert them. So what I just don't want is you guys to do these goals and then you'd be like, I need 3000 leads a month, that's crazy if we're keeping it at that low, low, low conversion rate. So if you want to kind of look back at your numbers this year, change this to see what that looks like, and then go forth with that, you can. I'm going to also change my contacts to appointment set. So meaning if I have 100 contacts in my command database and I set 15 appointments, that's a 15% conversion rate. So we can kind of do the math from there. So I might actually change this to 15 just to see that. Appointment set to agreements kept, this is at 75%. I might actually change that to 65. Appointments kept to agreements, I might change that to 65 as well. And then agreements to under contract or pending, I'll keep that as 75. And then under contract or pending to closed units, I'll keep that at 75. Then I'm just gonna hit save and continue. And then you'll see right over here, it shows you your goal conversion rates over here. Again, we can change these at any time. And then it shows you your GCI breakdown. So this is telling you your uh, annual estimated GCI is 200,000. 100,000 of that is your annual profit goal. 50,000 will go to your cost of sales. 50,000 will go to your expenses. And then we've got your average commission per unit down here. And then your business makeup of listings versus buyers. So once we've entered all of this information, it says review your goals, review your new goals. You can always go back in reports to make changes and review your progress. Then we can just hit what next. And then we honestly don't even need to do anything with this. We're gonna talk about something else new next. So once we get to this point, we're just gonna click this X at the top right. And that's going to allow us to go back into where we started, which is in that report section. So I'm just gonna check chat real quick um so let's see can i enter fixed amount expenses for mls dues annual fixed expenses and also percentage expenses so it either has to be donna that a percentage or it has to be a fixed rate so if you know the fixed rate and you want to add everything together we want to do that fixed rate we could do that but it we can't break it up it has to be a fixed rate or a flat fee for that um bob can we include pre-licensing class as an expense for the first year uh, yeah, absolutely. That was an expense, right? It's not a cost of sale. It's an expense. It's something that you paid to be able to run your business. So that's a great question. Like uh, CE classes, anything like that would absolutely go in as an expense. And then question, never mind. Okay. <laughs> if the question comes back to you or if you have anything else, um, just feel free to drop that in chat. So again, if you guys find, okay, I, I, I went to this, I saw this, I thought of this, we're good. And then you realize, oh shoot, that's another expense or, oh, I actually wanna increase my numbers or, oh, I need to make some changes. 
Very, very easy to do that. You would just follow the exact same steps. So we would follow those breadcrumbs that we left down the trail. So we would go into reports, same thing. We would go into goals. We would go into goal settings. And that's gonna take you right back to the screen where we just were so that you can see everything and make any adjustments you need to at any time. Now let's talk about how these goals are then basically what you enter, how that's tracked and how you can access that. So when I'm looking at my goals versus actual, so I'm gonna stay on this page, you'll see I've got leads, I've got contacts, I've got appointment set, appointment kept, agreements and under contract and closed. So leads and contacts are entered automatically. So if a lead comes through from your website or a lead comes through from your consumer app or a lead comes through from a Facebook ad, any sort of lead that is coming into your command platform, or if you enter a contact as a lead, I met them in an open house and they say that they wanna purchase in three to six months. If I mark them as a lead, the system knows you got five new leads this month and that's all you needed. So it's going to track your numbers right here of leads. The same thing with contacts. If it knows I need to enter X number of contacts this year, or I need new contacts added, as soon as you enter a contact, it's going to basically add that to the ticker and contacts are going to be here. Next few sections, appointment set, appointment kept, agreements, and under contract. Does anybody want to guess, and you can type it in chat, but does anybody want to guess what the system pulls from here? So how does the system know if you had an appointment set, if you kept an appointment, if you have an agreement, or if something's under contract? Does anybody want to guess like what applet in command that pulls from or how the system knows that? I'll give you guys just a moment if you want to guess about that in chat. Yes, you guys are so smart. Opportunities, absolutely. So appointment set, appointment kept, agreements, under contract, and closed. This all pulls from opportunities. You guys are such rock stars. So let's talk about how we can ensure that what you're entering into opportunities actually pulls into here. Can you guys hear me okay? I feel like I lost, let me just see. Okay, perfect, thank you, Grace, thank you. Um, I thought I was frozen for a second there. So if we go into opportunities, Hi guys, sorry, I don't know what happened there. I completely, everybody looked frozen and then I completely disappeared. <laughs> um, give me one second, let me just go back in and share and we'll move into how we can pull this up from opportunity. So give me one second while that pulls up. All right, and are you guys able to see my screen okay? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Just a little bit of technology working on our side today, right? <laughs> so let's talk about how opportunities pulls into your goals, what you're doing, because this is really, really important. So I'm going to go into an opportunity, an existing opportunity that I have. Um, these are really key metrics that we want to make sure we're tracking, and it's very, very easy. So I'm going to go into um, maybe I'll go into a listing that I'm cultivating. So all I'm gonna do is go into my opportunities, find that listing that I'm cultivating. This is someone that was maybe three to six months out and maybe it's moved up a little bit quicker. We're actually saying, let's go ahead and set that listing appointment now. So all I have to do is go into the actual opportunity. So to do that, I'm just gonna click on the opportunity name. And then these metrics down here, are what are really important. And that's what command is going to pull from. So all I have to do once I've entered the opportunity is in that general information, once I've clicked on it, I just have to click on the pencil right here. It allows me to make any changes. And so you'll see, I've got the estimated closing date. If I know that, or I have some sort of indication, I can enter that. The appointment was scheduled. So what day did I schedule the appointment? So I scheduled the appointment. We talked on the phone today and they said, yes, let's schedule an appointment. So I'm going to say today, when is the appointment date? 
So the listing appointment, when is that? We're gonna say that we're meeting on the 17th. And then once we've met on the 17th, when was the agreement won? Meaning, did I leave that listing appointment with signed paperwork? Or did I leave that listing appointment and they said, we'd like to think about it, we're not sure. And so maybe I called them and touched base with them on the 20th and they said, we love what you had to say. We want to go with you. We love your marketing. So even though the appointment was on the 17th, that doesn't mean that I won that on the 17th. That means that I potentially won that on the 20th. And then when did this listing go under contract? When did a buyer say yes to it? Maybe that happened very quickly, <laughs> the 22nd. And then when did it actually close? We have that estimated closing date. When did it actually close? So maybe it will actually close on the 19th as well. So we're just gonna hit save. And then you'll notice all of that then changes right in here. And this is what pulls into your reports and your goals. So I'll back up and show that one more time because I know this is so, so valuable. So again, I would go into any opportunity, click on that. Once I click into the opportunity, it takes me into the details tab. All I do is click right here on that pencil. And then down here at the bottom is where I would enter all of those really important dates. Now I can come in and change this at any time or I can fill in a little bit, right? If I say, well, the appointment was scheduled and then I wanna make sure that I actually keep the appointment, I could come back at a later date and add that. So you can add as little or as, as much as you know at the time. And then that is what pulls all of that into your reports, your goals, everything. So you can see in real time how close you are to hitting those goals. The final thing that I wanna share with you guys, because if you really are gonna be using goals at a high level, it's really valuable for you to see the goals when you first log into command. So I wanna remind you that this dashboard, your homepage of command is completely customizable at any time. So if I come into my homepage here and I click on customize home, which is just at the top right, over on the left, I have all of the widgets that I can choose to have on my homepage. And then over on the right is the order in which I would like to see those widgets. So if I want my goals front and center, I might want them actually above tasks because I'm very, very goal oriented. And so when I first log in, that's the first thing that I wanna see. So I can drag and drop these and choose the order of importance and how I see that. And then I would just hit apply. And then you'll notice in real time that now my tasks have moved right down here. My goals have moved right up here and I can see that year to date as well as month to date and see all of my numbers and all of my metrics there very, very nicely. So I'm gonna, um, yeah, question. Somehow the Zoom kicked me and a couple of other people off. So I had to log back in. Yeah, I don't, um, it kicked me off. So the last part that I saw you were, um, you had put in all the information for it to pull over into the goals, I believe, but um, where did you go to next to get back? Yeah, so you? once you enter everything into the goals, um, if you just, there's an X at like the top screen, that'll take you back to the homepage of command. How did you leave opportunities to go back over here? We were still on opportunities. Oh, so I can just, anytime that you want to go back home, if you just click the little oh. home right up here, it'll take you back to your home dashboard. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. And then I can choose to customize this if I'd like my goals to show at the top of the page for that. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to stop share for just a moment. And just in the last minute, I'm going to drop everything that I dropped in the beginning of class again. Um, so again, the first link let me just grab all this the first link that i'm going to have there is going to be a link to our youtube channel give me one second perfect so the first link is going to be the link to our youtube channel which is where you'll be able to view all of the 12 days of command as well as all of our workshops then the second one will take you to facebook that has our full list of the 12 days of command. Um, second and third will take you to what we covered today. So those are answers articles around that if you wanna take a look at that. And then just a reminder tomorrow, um, we'll be able to talk about opportunity checklists and the ability to then automate client updates. So that'll be, I think 
day seven of the 12 days of command, if my math is right, and that'll be tomorrow at 2 p.m. So not in the morning tomorrow, it'll be tomorrow at 2 p.m. So hopefully you guys will all be able to attend that. Um, I do see a quick question. Can you add tags? Um, yes, yeah, so you can add custom tags to um, any contact in command. So you can actually create a custom tag as you're adding a contact. You can just type it out and create a custom one, and then you can apply multiple tags to that contact. So one contact could have multiple tags. Yeah, you can absolutely do that when you're adding a contact. All right, you guys, thank you all for being here. Sorry about the little freezing there with technology, but thank you for rolling with that. And um, hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow at two o'clock where we'll talk all about opportunity checklists. Have an awesome day, everyone. Thanks for being here.